Here's a fun wild edible. I believe I touched on this briefly in the last episode, but I don't think I covered it in very much detail. So this is called strawberry blight, sometimes called strawberry spinach. Now when I first saw this, it looked like a disease almost on the plant, but that's just how the berries grow. And you can eat the leaves as well. The leaves make a nice salad green and the berries will make a nice garnish. Here's a good one to know. This is wild rose, or Rosa acicularis. It's pretty common around here, which of course makes it really fun to walk through the bushes. Now, wild roses were used for many, many different things. You can eat the leaves, you can eat the berries or rose hips. The rose hips contain a ton of vitamin C. The leaves are good uh, salad greens. The rose hips were also used to make jewelry, funny enough. Once they were dry, they get very, very hard. One thing you should know about wild rose is that species identification is rather difficult because uh, different species hybridize with each other all the time. Luckily, it's not necessary to learn all the different species because they can all be used interchangeably. That being said, another little warning is not to eat rosehip seeds. Certain sources say that they are edible, other sources say that uh, the hairs can irritate your throat. Yeah, a great wild edible to know. Just a few feet away we find another wild edible. These are currants. Now currants are good to eat, you can eat the berries and you can eat the leaves. There are different species, there's black currants, there's wax currants. Uh, they can all be used pretty interchangeably. The taste of currants is pretty mild, I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, they're not particularly sweet and they're not bitter. In fact, the taste I can compare it most to is tomato, funny enough. It is a testament to the decreased bear population in this area that there are currants. Speaking of bears... Here's a fun flower. These are known as harebells. Harebells are edible. Uh, you can eat the flowers and the leaves. Harebells also have some medicinal properties. You can dig up the root and it can be chewed to help with heart and lung problems. And they can also be brewed into a decoction to use as eardrops for ear infections and such. Here's a good example of bull thistle or spear thistle. You can eat everything from the flowers down to the roots, including the oil and seeds. I've always found thistles to be more trouble than they're worth. They have a very bland flavor and don't provide many calories or nutrients. So better to leave this one alone. Leave it for the honeybees because they do love these flowers and uh, go find something with a little bit more flavor. So I believe I touched on this plant briefly in the last video, although I just said that it was an invasive species. I didn't actually go over any of its uses. This plant here is known as mullen, or verbascum thapsus. Some sources say that this plant is purely medicinal, while others say that it is edible. Uh, I can attest to the fact that the flowers are in fact edible, though the seeds, which grow directly next to them, are highly toxic. A tea made from the leaves or flowers is thought to help with lung infections or asthma, and smoking the leaves is thought to clear out the lungs, though some people find this practice questionable. In terms of practical uses, mullen has a lot. Uh, once it dries, it's a very stiff, rigid, and very straight stalk, so it's good for hand drill friction fires. Those seed heads dry out and can be dipped in wax or lard to make a torch, and the leaves can be used as padding or shoe insoles and as toilet paper. So, a good one to know, even if it is an invasive species here. come across the dragon's nest. Be a cool little lookout.
Here's another pretty common wild edible, raspberries. Really not much to say about raspberries. They produce berries all through the summer and into fall, and they're very easily recognizable. Throw back to last time, still not seeing any treasure. So I know I talked about this in the previous video. This is yarrow or Achilla millifolium. And I think I talked about its astringent effects, uh, how it can stop bleeding, and its uses as medicinal tea for treating colds and flu. What I didn't talk about were some of its edible, other medicinal, and practical uses. So as an edible plant, a lot of people consider it too bitter to eat, although it has been used to replace hops in beer, and sometimes parboiled as a vegetable, although, again, really bitter. However, uh, the tea has been used to treat colds and fevers, like I said, but also stimulates sweating and lowers blood pressure. It's been used to treat diarrhea, urinary tract infections, and even diabetes, and it's been used as a topical antiseptic as well. So I found another puffball. They seem to be popping up all over the place. In fact, there's a second one. I'd like to show you the reason why they are called puffballs. Interesting to see, nonetheless. This one has started to take on this yellow tinge. That means it's no longer good to eat. However, this one is still pure white on the inside. If you do believe it's a puffball, there's a couple things you can look for. But it should not have a cap and a stem. It should be one solid piece with a fleshy inside. All you have to do to prepare them is peel off this outer layer. You can fry them in butter or cook them into any recipe. There's lots that you can find online, though they are safe to eat raw. The taste is absolutely nothing to get excited over. It's sort of the consistency of cheesecake without any of the taste. So, handy wild edible to know, especially a giant puffball will definitely fill your belly. Uh, if you saw the size of the last one that I found, I just found some giant puffballs, which I've actually never found here before. It can be a meal all on its own. Oh, I'm in his tree, all right. This is what I love about birch bark. You get the right piece and the entire section just peels right off. So not only is it a really handy fire starter, you can make a lot of different things out of it. This one's known as fireweed. Fireweed can be eaten pretty much in its entirety. The flowers, stems, and leaves, and roots can all be eaten raw or cooked. And uh, the older stems are best eaten by uh, peeling them and eating just the inside because the outside is pretty tough and bitter. They're also good for making cordage once they're old and dried out. But the best part about this wild edible, in my opinion, is the inner pith, which contains tons of vitamins and minerals. It's, it's nature's multivitamin, really, and it tastes pretty nice as well.